Hello Charlie, thank you for using my online critiquing service. You've done a great job and uh, this is, according to your questionnaire, one of the great places you'd like to be. Let's have a look at what you've done well and then we'll look at a few minor suggestions. What you have done well in this painting is that it's got good continuity and good consistency. Uh, we have foreground, midground and background. Uh, a variety of different techniques, painting water, trees and so on. And uh, good composition. Let's have a few, look at a few little things that you might be able to improve upon. Now, the first thing is, what is the painting about? I suspect it's to do with the bridge because the bridge is painted with the most detail and accuracy and the rest of it's pretty loose. Uh, and that's a bit of a problem because that's just halfway. There's an issue to do with um, viewpoint. Now, the viewer is standing somewhere around near here and so we can't easily get to the bridge because we'd have to go back and somehow there's a track there but it's hard to get to it. We can't go into the water. So we're standing in long grass and it might be a little bit snaky. So there's a, a kind of impending, a little bit of impending disaster. Not quite, but a little bit. So that's one issue. So to improve on that, what I'd suggest that we do is we make a more defined pathway so the person can look like they can travel through or they've come back from that other side of the bridge. How will we do that? Well, first thing is we do is we open up this a little bit more, we get rid of some of this uh, vegetation, and we make it more of a defined path. And even the path down here towards the, the creek makes it look like that creek is a little bit more accessible. So opening that area up through there will help. So we would walk through here to here. Now this is another small area of, of problem because what we have is we can't easily get onto the bridge. It, it, it's sharp all the way through here till there, then it gets fuzzy and it, miss, it mixes in with that tree and so it needs more clarification so we can easily get into that, um, that bridge. And it looks like the land needs to go up slightly more so we can get onto the bridge. So that would certainly help. Uh, I'll come back to that aspect a little more shortly but there's another couple of things that concern me. One is it's you have multiple light sources and let's have a look at that. So in this case the light's coming down through here hitting the tree there suggesting that the light's over there. Um, some of these other ones it looks like it's the lights behind there but when we look at this tree and a couple of other things the light is here. On the pylon over here the light source is totally to the right hand side over that side which it should be over here. So let's suggest that the light should be over here in the light in the in the background uh, beaming through those trees. Now if that is the case, a couple of things happen. Normally a lot of this would be in silhouette. In a moment I'll show you a slide of a photograph I've taken of a similar sort of scene where a number of the branches and trees are in silhouette. Not all in silhouette, not all black, but some parts are a lot darker because the light is behind. Now that also creates uh, the light wraps around those branches and leaves and makes these little sky holes uh, and also rounds off the shapes through there. So I would suggest that you probably want the light a little bit further up here. Um, as this is, is an Australian bush scene as well, a lot of our trees tend to scrag and they hang out and they look like some, some branches and leaves hang almost in midair because you can't see the fine branches uh, that go out to them. So that's one thing to do with the light, where the light's got to come. So it's got to be a little bit more consistent. Um, as we say, it's in a few odd little spots here and there. But that can be fixed up without a great deal of effort. The other problem is, tonally, it's a little bit similar. Um, and I'll show you a slide shortly too of where I put this image in a, and turned it into black and white. And you can see that it probably could be boosted up with a little bit more variety of tone in there. Both to anchor it, because as you come further down into grass and trees and what, and grass and trunks, it gets dark because there's less light moving around. So a bit more variety through there. Now on colour as well, colour's a bit of a problem because we have the same sort of colours largely elsewhere. You've only got about two or three different greens here, but I'll show you a slide where in the bush, in the landscape, there's lots of different sorts of greens there. Brown greens and grey greens and blue and blue greens and so many different greens. Um, and here you've used a very narrow range. It would be good for you to develop that range a little bit more. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to use uh, this sort of bright green down through there, which is very vibrant and comes forward. 
the, the greens down there should be kind of killed off a little bit. And these greens are the same greens that you've got up the tree. So there's some inconsistencies in that. Uh, also with vegetation, when the vegetation has light behind it, parts of that vegetation is a lot brighter than when uh, the light is coming on top of it, falling on the top rather than glowing through it. So that's a little uh, something that you might consider changing uh, the colour scheme, just developing a little bit more. Now, I have digitally enhanced this and made a couple of little suggestions as well. And what I've suggested is bringing some of this flat landscape that people can walk on and bring that into a few little spots uh, to lighten up the landscape, not only on this side, but also on the other side. So it looks like you can go across the bridge and also walk down and come over to the, um, to the creek bed there. So, but I've done that digitally, done it very quickly. It's uh, not a very attractive or slick production, but it gives you an idea of lightening that little area. And that helps to move the eye back and forth around the picture. Uh, the other suggestions I've made is that uh, I think this is really about a, a picture about a journey uh, rather than just being a place. It's because you've got to get to that place. So is this about you getting there or going away or being on your own? What is it? So I've made a few little enhancements to the picture to try and direct you, your eye to one particular spot. So at the moment, I'm not sure what the important area is. It's obviously to do with the bridge and getting across. Uh, so we'll see if you like the suggestion I'm making. But there's a lot of different narratives that you can have in this picture as well. The other thing too is normally uh, a creek gets bigger and it gets bigger towards the viewer as well. So on the little uh, slide that I've made, I've just opened this up a little bit more and the tree feels, this tree feels like it's a little bit more in the water. So either it could be a little bit further over, over here, or certainly opening up that, that creek. So the creek looks like it's going well over the other side of that big trunk. Let's have a look at some of those slides right now. small problems too. Why I think that you really enjoy painting this bridge and why I think it's about this bridge is because if we look very carefully through here there's a what I call halos right along the top of the bridge and behind there your trees don't go all the way down all the way behind here there's little gaps in there so I suspect that you probably put the bridge in and then thought oh I better put the background in there and uh, you didn't want to repaint over all this bridge and I can understand that because that's kind of tricky uh, but there are some tools that you could use other than a brush to do that bridge um, and we don't have time to have a look at those tools today but there is a halo through there so those trees need to be brought back down through here the other thing too is that there's aerial perspective happening here and these trees should be bluer uh, more grey more fuzzy in the distance and also, as we're reasonably high up, we're on a bank, we should be looking down there, and unless this is on a big hilltop, we should be uh, seeing some other trees or other landscape further back there. So there's a bit of a technical problem with the drafting through there. We wouldn't see the sky all the way right down here. That suggests that we're up high. And if we're up really high, there can't be a creek running down. So there's a little bit of a problem there. But uh, that can be easily fixed with just painting in a fuzzy, grey, blue landscape. In the slide that I've presented to you as well as an alternative to this is make, make this tree much darker than what it currently is because it's, it's not really telling us a great deal. It doesn't need to tell us a great deal. So by making it a lot darker, our eye can go through here. Now this uh, tree fern, there's a bit of a problem because it looks like it's lit from the front, it's very bright, but in fact if the light was coming through here, some parts would be highlighted, the rest would be really dark. So my attention keeps on going to that one tree. And that's what you've got to be careful of too. Don't have one single thing here and there, like that tree. If you're going to have that tree, have a few more. Um, and I've just noticed something too, even though there's, there's pylons here that we can see, where are the pylons on this side? Uh, we might be able to see, or we should be able to see part of the pylons here holding the bridge up. There's a couple of rocks over here, that's good, you've repeated that. Be good to have those rocks there as well. Once again, there's a bit of a problem where the lighting comes from, hitting those rocks, but you've done a good job of the water. That, that's great. Now, 
The narrative that I'm suggesting is this is a painting about a person who's in the wilderness, but they're not on, in the wilderness on their own. Either they have gone for a walk and they're meeting up with somebody else, or they've been walking with someone else and they've gone ahead and this other person's coming up. So what I'm suggesting is this, that we have a painter who's come along through here, walking through, come down through there and waited at that great spot, their favourite spot, they're standing here, then up through here comes one of their friends who's going, yay, hi, hello. Uh, as long as they're doing some sort of activity, they don't have to do an activity, they can just be looking there and standing there and uh, looking back at us. There's a small problem though, however, with this tree that's just here and the divided interest of that bush. So I'd, I'd cut the bush down a bit, that uh, tree turn. But see, that, uh, that trunk is, looks like it's going underneath the bridge. So that needed to, would need to be extended down through here and much, much darker, and certainly wouldn't have a highlight on that side. Okay, that'll do. viewpoints up on the bridge, take photographs down from it, take lots of photographs, do some sketchings and start producing more paintings of your favourite place.